Tanja Belisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations here to describe a, an antenna that you may never have heard of, the vertical V-beam antenna. And you may have never heard of it because it was kind of invented by a friend of mine way back in the summer of 1988. The spring and summer of 1988. The vertical V-beam antenna. Now this friend of mine was a short wave listener. He was not a radio ham. So he never really uh, got a chance to do any technical evaluations of an antenna like this. But it's basically a V-beam antenna tilted on its side with two legs both of them length L as measured in wavelengths. One of them sloping up to a parafoil kite. The other one a horizontal running more or less a few feet above the surface of the earth. And this uh, wire and this wire together define a vertical plane. That is to say this upper wire flies right over the lower one so you would have to adjust the position of the lower one and of course this whole arrangement is kind of subject to the whims of the wind because depending on what direction the wind blows that's going to determine the orientation of your antenna now in order to get the optimum amount of gain out of an antenna like this you would have to adjust the lengths and the angle just as you would do with an ordinary V-beam. But adjusting the length may not be quite so easy in a case like this. So, um, and, and adjusting the angle certainly is not very easy either. So you're kind of uh, going to end up with uh, choosing your frequency based on these particular whims of the wind. But if you work it just like a horizontal V-beam, you, you're going to get a massive major lobe going off at an angle of one-half alpha with respect to the horizon. And a parafoil kite normally flies at an angle of about 30 degrees relative to the horizon. So you might have a 15 degree elevation for your major lobe. Now the other side of the major lobe of course seeing as you can't very well terminate this in resistors particularly the top half the other uh, part of the major lobe is going to go under the ground so it's going to be kind of irrelevant. You're going to get your major lobe unidirectional by default unless you believe that radio waves can travel through solid earth for great distances and I don't happen to believe that. Just kidding, just being a little facetious here. But the fact of the matter is, an antenna like this might actually work. The problem, though, there's a couple of problems. One of these is that the wires are not equally distant from the surface. So you're going to get different currents in one as opposed to the other. Secondly, it's not going to be very efficient for transmitting this lower wire right here because it's going to be so close to the surface that being a horizontally uh, run wire this close to the surface it's not going to work very well so it, it's it's kind of a it was kind of a whim of this friend of mine but he was just into short wave listening he wasn't concerned about antenna efficiency or anything very much he just thought well that's cool if you have a horizontal uh, v-beam if you can have a horizontal v-beam why not a vertical v-beam and the guy loved his kites he had a great big parafoil, bigger than a person, and capable of lifting a child up into the air. He had to have a three or four hundred pound test line in order to cope with the tension, even in a moderate breeze, that this parafoil would produce. He was a real kite maniac, had some really big ones. But the parafoil works best for an application like this because it flies at a relatively low angle with respect to the horizon. Others like the delta might fly at 70 degrees with respect to the horizon. That's almost straight up. 
and the delta cone conine might actually fly straight up <coughs> and make it good for a vertical but not so good for a vertical vb anyway that's the uh, the scoop on this little notion and with that i will simply conclude and let you ponder it if you're a short wave listener and you have a lot of real estate and you're willing to to, and you know how to fly wires and kites, and that's a dangerous business, so I caution you right there. That's a, a dangerous business indeed. You don't want to do that unless you know exactly what you're doing. But for now, I will sign off, proprietor and operator, of not W1ND, but w one GV, saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long.